Hello and welcome. Today is the 12th day of July 2017. My name is Derek and this will be a technical analysis video within the cryptocurrency markets. But before getting into such, I'm going to start with a few tips for this game. And I really like to emphasize such as game and that of trading. As with any game or most games, you have a score. Score is usually defined by a number. In this case, say in Bitcoins, it's defined in a number. The game is to try to increase that number. And then there's other particulars within the game, like how much your Bitcoins are worth in your current fiat currency, in my case, the Canadian dollar. And even things like how many ounces of silver are in my possession that have been purchased through Bitcoin. For myself, that number is around the 70 number now. And it's only going to keep getting or growing higher as this game keeps on playing through. So some key things, and this is pretty much for almost any gambling game, is do not play scared money. And this is going to go on the emotions as well. But you have to understand your risk and realize it's either going to go good or bad and be able to... Uh, make the smart decisions this way because if you play with scared money, you're usually going to make mistakes. Recognize and understand the situation. This and that's, that's for like so many different things. Whether it's a situation of a market that's going to go higher or lower, a situation for what you need to do with maybe your bankroll. Maybe you see there's a spot where you can sell at an amazing price and you can do this and that afterwards and then you because you understand it and recognize it then you basically follow through from such and you find any opportunities that are available and you do that by understanding its opportunities within its uh, situations of course emotions leave them at the door this goes with the first one and not playing with scared money and anytime that markets usually go down the big thing is people like sell and flurries and that's why you get those uh, big down moves and those amazing pump rallies is because of people trade large within their emotions and the base one is people as things are getting so high they think it's just going to keep going higher and higher and people make some interesting buys probably when they should think it over uh, through and maybe even pass on selling at different stages because emotion like, oh man, this is going way up and it's going to go up more kind of kind of thinking as well. And if you're losing, getting some losses and then they do what you call tilt betting that can often make uh, even poor decisions there. So I have to highly uh, state that emotions, you got to leave them at the door. And the next two is basically game theory for any game, whether it be like physical co contact, competitive sports, anything with an opponent. You want to exploit your opponent's weaknesses while you maximize or you minimize uh, your own weaknesses. And you want to minimize your opponent's strengths while you min uh, maximize your own strengths. So if there's a situation where you know people are buying for way too much, and that's that's a weakness right there that uh, you can exploit from people. Maybe the book situation is set where no one's got any uh, lower sell orders. I can sell this at, say, whatever price. And maybe someone will buy it off me when they are paying way too much. So there's so many different ways when you can uh, consider the fact that you are also playing against the general community as well. Have a game plan to follow and look to improve game plans when you can. And that's understanding your strategy, how you get in, how you get out, how you are managing all of your different funds, how you are profit taking, all these different mechanisms in which you are playing with. And then you say, man, if I add this to it or if I, if this, this could probably increase profits if I do this and that's making your game plan better. And then the plan B, plan C, if else, that's going over many different situations. If, uh, say, for example, I want to do this, and if it's going to do that, I can then do that. But if it doesn't do that, 
then it's going to probably do something in this area, then my action will be in this case. So it's understanding that. It's also like thinking many turns ahead, the something that's popular in things like chess that's uh, in there as well. And volume and diversification. Volume is making sure that you are trading enough to manage yourself to get very good profits, but not trading too much that can make your bankroll basically get destroyed. And with the diversification, having it set so that with your, with your many different types of uh, coins, then if the ones you're in, if it just works out that you got the bad ones, then that's not going to work out too well. So let's now move on to the charts. And I'm going to start off not with Bitcoin, but with ETC priced in against Bitcoin as it managed to get about a few weeks worth of losses grinding its way back lower in one day. Also, I've talked a little bit about failed move, fast move. And can we define such in here? Well, just quickly drawing a line in here. I know it's not the straightest, but that doesn't matter. This would be the failed breakdown as it was in a situation of breaking lower, having a few days within this previous level, but then of course breaking down below from here and then boom, not shoots up first to the 18 average of lows, then to the 18 average of highs and then up to the level of this previous twice hit an uh, area of general resistance which of course pierces up even to the the nine handle and when we look at this on a shorter term time frame and within such the from the down move that was consistently going lower in here it had a good leg lower on this one and then when you follow this within the 18 average band which was obviously in the declining facet making this lower high coming back to the lower end, not making a lower low, however, and then making a higher high. Okay, so maybe it's trying to revert trend, but what would be important is making a higher low from here, which obviously didn't happen, no. Rather, it broke down in here, broke down against the very short-term support, and then the, this level in here, so the failed move is obviously the lowest end, south of 59. But even just looking at its movements on an individual candle basis, this one in here, this is a situation in which it goes all the way down below 58, and then at the end of the time frame manages to get close to 61. It sells off to previous low in its next session, and then continues to go lower here to what its bottom is, thus making the failed breakdown. And then we just even look at the little bit, green candle up, big move to the 18 average of highs, back down in here again, but making the higher low and then everything just uh, goes haywire to the upside, really giving back all the losses since its fall at the end of June. So that's like over two weeks of losses brought back in one session. So that's how fast that these markets can be moving. And at this stage, it's just at the upper end of its resistance area, area uh, range that it's in. It hasn't got any uh, major breakout moves on the more longer term time frame. And now on the Bitcoin exchange against the US dollar, an update today and very small for that at around 3%. And its movement is to this very newly forming declining 18 average of lows. So as far as setup analysis for any pattern that may bring lower highs and lower lows, well, the early setup is, of course, a breakdown significantly below the band. And you don't want it too deep because, well, you just don't want it. You want it an okay move, which is what it is, back up to the band. But you not only want to see it leaving it, but probably at least breaking down either below here or in here. And then you can get very cautious and think, okay, this thing is starting to roll over. But if we look at this sort of like the ETC, 
I don't know if you want to call it a failed move if it uh, has a rise higher, but it's still in the sideways range. And just like ETC, if it does have any type of three day move like this, it, it could potentially make it to 3,200 in three to four days if enough buyers are to come in the market keyword of course always is on that if scenario but the big big thing is it's in its range pretty much in the semi lower end the ethereum chart in a very interesting situation because it's at uh, two levels which is first a previous support and also it at the 18 average of lows and it's been grinding its way lower so it's obviously still in that of the early forms of a bear market right now with even with an 11 percent 12 percent rather gain at this stage so you're really at a key now what what are you going to do situation and when i say what are you going to do i really don't know if you start to get rolling over as we see from this band like in here then yeah sure maybe we can come down and test this area but it's also good to note that if this thing continues to go well this would most certainly qualify as the failed breakdown from this support and that's in a situation oh next day you're in the 18 average and just barely above it like ether seeded you can basically think, okay, now that I know what fast moves are usually like, I got to think if it's in here at like 11.8 or whatever, it's going to at least 13, 13 and change. And, and that's relatively quickly as well. Just like ETC may be getting back to this upper end. But that's, of course, only on that if situation. It's at that point. Okay, this area is likely to be an area where we'll find resistance. Now we'll see if it is now that it's there. After a decent fall from the band and a return to such, it usually is going to stop going up, at least on the short term. And if it does that, stop going higher, and yet over the next little while is able to hold well above its low established in this point and stays in here, then you're, what you're going to do is develop some sideways consolidation, making it like, yeah, well... You were supposed to stop going up here, and you did, and then you go higher. That's kind of normal market movements when you're able to correct a move through time. So you have a nice little rally, and this is what it shows in the long term. You correct it through time, rally, time, rally. And so far within this, with, with this extra lower low, that's why this would be the failed breakdown if it has a quick move back above the 18 average of highs. Litecoin is next, and it's doing everything you'd want to do by the book as, well, the book I'd write, although I don't have no motivation to write any trading books. However, if I were, you have a situation of this beautiful rally. You want to you stop going higher, and here's the correction through time. Maybe you can call this a failed breakdown again, but either way, correction within the span, extend the high, correcting going sideways. How do we see this in current form? Well, after what was a cumulative of five days within the band, you come up here, little rally, come back down. It's having another attempt of leaving this band within these two levels of resistance. But you're in a nice bullish trend that every single time that you've gotten these decent moves breaking out. And there's one in here. There's one here. There's been a lot of good things that have happened when Litecoin has broken out from the 18 average of highs in the rising fashion. Moving on to Dash, and what's been consistent since the middle of May is the 18 average really hasn't done any declining facets. Yeah, a little bit in here. But it's been in a beautiful uptrend, which means the market has been making higher highs, higher lows. We have this significant low in place. We've already placed in these highs. So leaving out above here means, okay, this is a test of this key level. And quite frankly, there really isn't that much up until previous high breaking through. The only key resistance points are ones that it would create on its own. But it almost looks like it's a free run to the previous high of around the uh, 0.12 handle uh, on the break. Looking at Strat now, and if you look at this percentage gain, 
43%, at least from this low it is. Maybe not necessarily from here. However, that's a big move from uh, 100,000 Satoshi upwards to 182. It's not at any key points other than the short term level here. I mean, you'd be thinking it's, it's got to go here and maybe it will. But it is at a couple of key levels. I mean, one's the 18 average of lows. And if we take the Fibonacci from this high and this low, and then we get a key number in that uh, 1750 and 2550. So it's already pierced a little bit above that. So that's at a key area which uh, should have an area where it stops going higher. And if it does, then you'd probably go fast to the next level. That's at the 25. And it usually would pierce above that. So you'd be talking closer to 26 to 27 if you want to try to make the most aggressive sell orders in at this level. Just like now, if you wanted to sell at the key fib, even though it's the 170s, okay, 183, 182, 185, it works out within this band right now. And then, of course, look, what I usually do is I would sell here. And then I would probably try to buy back in here. I would determine the message of the market if I want to buy on a higher low, a matching low, or a lower low. I think in this case, I would take the higher low. Let's move on to ZEC, up about 16%. However, it is below the 18 average of low st still. So it's moving into a... Uh, it's going to need some more upward action to get a proper price correction or a few more days, a couple more days going to st of staying at the 90 handle to be uh, correcting through time as well. However, if we look at where it should go, it could, it could very easily make a move up to this point, especially when we look at the Fibonacci from like we did the last chart from this low and this high. What I've come up with is key areas at around the, well, even 10 and the 12 number. So the even 10 is right in here. Oftentimes I'll pierce it, but it would match in within the 18 average band as well. So I think it's got a decent chance of furthering its gains, another 10 or so percent. And if it can extend past that, the 12 handle would work within this previous support mark at the end of June as its next key point. And I'm going to conclude this recording with Sia coin. This is something I bought last at 333. But I didn't sell on the way down and I haven't even sold it yet. I still own what I have bought at that price handle as I want to sell a little bit higher than that. However, I kind of wonder why do people sell down here? At what point could you have bought where it's a smart decision to sell as it was breaking down below here? I can't figure it out, but my trading mechanism is if a market's going to go down, I don't want to be a seller on the way down. I want to be a buyer on the way down. And when markets are going up, I don't want to be a buyer on the way up. I want to be a seller on the way up. So that's basically how the basis of my buying and selling works, works out. And uh, there'll be times where I'll be like, oh man, do I sell here? Yeah, and that, that's a different story. But other than those types of situations, I normally just wait for markets to go down. I've bought in a lot in the previous few days on July the 10th and the 11th, many, many buy orders. Today, it was only sell orders that was appearing in because a lot of the markets are having green candle up days, but a lot of them are having them after many, many down days earlier in this month of July. So thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great night and day. Bye-bye.